What I wanted to speak to all of you about is the challenge on a very human level for, for the guru, for the, for, for the realizer, for the individual who assumes that position. And you were speaking about it in a very powerful, in a pow a powerful way you know, tonight that I could personally really uh, relate to uh, very, very deeply, that no matter how realized an individual may be or may not be, there's, there's still a human being. And there's and, and, and there's a there's a very human uh, dimension to assuming the karmic burden of the transformation of one's disciples. How hard is it to hold a community of a hundred or hundred and fifty people who are living together? How hold, how hard is it to hold? just just let's skip the spiritual teaching for a minute. How difficult is it, <laughs> the spiritual part, the esoteric part, forget it. How hard is it to get 150 people to live, you know, and work together in a peaceful and harmonious manner? How hard is that? It's probably one of the hardest things. <laughs> I, think, I think splitting the atom would probably be the more e easier. You, you have to have, first of all, achieved something in your, in your sadhana <laughs> just to be able to hold a group of people together. Certainly. Now, in our culture, I mean, one of the things that, that is really a problem for us is that we have groups of people around us. Right. We live together. We don't live in, right. in individual housing. We live together. We share our meals together. We share a, some form of spiritual practice together. You know, we interact with one another a lot and reinforce our values together. Yes, yes. The, the culture thinks that's really weird. I mean, we are, we are different. <laughs> and anything that sort of sets itself up in contrast to the, to the general culture is going to automatically attract some, you know, attack. So when you, when you were speaking earlier, though, you were expressing that on a human level how challenging it is to, to even if, even if it, it's true that one has choicelessly assume this role, uh, on a human level, it's still uh, quite often ultimately challenging emotionally, psychologically, well, even it's, spiritually. You know, it's stressful yeah. because you're doing something you care deeply about. Uh -huh. And, you know, it's a very, I mean, we're swimming culturally against the current and trying to share something that is at the vibrant core of our being with people who have all kinds of confusion about it. They're going many different ways. Their fragmentation, as Master Charles would say, really resists integration and resists the experience of that integrated wholeness. So, you know, that is a struggle. The human part of it is that you have these endless amounts of expectation coming at you from every different direction, which you have to deal with. Mm -hmm. And of course, our humanness some of our humanness likes that feedback that we're getting. Mm -hmm. you know, and it's very difficult not to become entangled in that, caught up in the positive feedback that some people are giving us and not see, you know, their agenda, you know, not see their expectation at work. It's very easy. It's, it's a problem for us continuously. And it's painful to endlessly have to have the discipline of separating yourself from the expectations of the people around you and their own you know, projections, projections mm -hmm. and remain at all times in your humanness, in yourself. That's very difficult and very painful. But you, you know and we all know that you know, the consequences of not doing that are much more painful <laughs> than, right. than, than the pain of, you know, dealing with the situation in the highest possible manner. Oh, Muktananda yeah. once said to me, <clears throat> being the guru is the curse. Mm. Mm. Remain secret as long as you can. Mm. <clears throat> and we had many discussions about that, he and I. I wanted to know exactly what he meant <clears throat> of the guru as the curse. What, what is this about? He said, well, in more modern terminology, um, the guru is a garbage dump. Everybody comes to you and dumps, huh? one after the other after the other. Oh, this is wrong. Oh, I have this problem. Oh, this conflict. Oh, this challenge. Oh, this misery. This confusion. This illusion. 
dump, 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 dump. <laughs> and what do you do with it? You're, you're then, you're full. You got all the garbage. The classical principle was you got the power, you got the fire. You take the karma of the disciple because you can burn it in the power of your fire. And it's an alchemy. It's mm -hmm. a, a transformational process. And the sacrifice is that you have to endure it. You have to remain embodied and go through all the dimensionalized aspects of that, that transmutation mm -hmm. process. Mm -hmm. And that can be very intense. Huh? But why isn't it always uh, an intensity that's going to annihilate you? <clears throat> because uh, at the center of it uh, is your bliss. Uh, at the center of it is mm -hmm. your realization uh, that includes the sacrifice. And within that also is the awareness that that is your evolution in this role. Uh, the more that alchemical process happens, the more you transmute, the higher you go. So it's not just about evolution of the disciple. It's about evolution of the guru too. For consciousness is evolving in. So you're all saying forms. there's a relation that there's, that, there's, that there's also a relationship between uh, uh, assuming this karmic burden or choicelessly assuming this karmic mm -hmm. burden of of the disciple and uh, and and the evolution development of the guru. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. And I watched that. I. I mean, we had a brilliant model in Muktananda, but to watch him from the days we met him in 1970 to where he was in 1982 when he left to see the evolution in his consciousness. Hmm. You know, it's um, there's always a tension between the divine and the human within yes, a, within a exactly. person. Yes, exactly. Yeah, that's right. And the first the first attempt often we make is to transcend. And, uh, you know, that's uh, the model where you go to a cave and you go higher and higher. Uh, but the problem is that you come back and then you're with people and then you get brought down. Yeah. So it's the same for everyone in this, in this sense. There has to be a perfect integration mm -hmm. of the personal and the divine. Mm -hmm. And I think that, that um, I noticed around uh, Muktananda, there was a powerful experience of the divine, uh, enormous experience of the divine. But people weren't integrated personally. So a lot of people mm -hmm. in the post Muktananda experience yeah. uh, were integrating in many different ways, psychological ways and other kinds of personal ways, and trying to bring it all together. And sometimes they went too far to the personal where they lost sure. exactly the connection. Sure. Sure. Uh, and so there has to be that balance. I think we experience that balance between the personal and the impersonal, and every seeker does. But I'm yeah. speaking about something slightly uh, different than, than this, in, than this significant point you raised about this yeah. the integration between the divine and the human which is which is yeah. very you know it's a big it's a big issue big especially issue. as you know as this whole notion of enlightenment you know emerges in in, in western culture yeah. and 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 then the whole question is explored but what I'm, I'm i'm specifically speaking about the the human challenge in other words I'm, you know, even even Swami Muktananda, you know, that had mm -hmm. to face many challenges mm -hmm. on a human level. Mm -hmm. You know, even even in light of or in the face of his you know profound realization and mm -hmm. enormous power, there was still a mm -hmm. human being there mm -hmm. that had emotional psychological challenges mm -hmm. that were an inherent part uh, and consequence of his of, uh, of the fact that he really entered into the world and embraced this role. You know, yeah. in a, in no, a very this, big way. So that, always, that's what I'm referring to. There's always a human challenge, and so could you uh, speak a little bit about that? Like in terms well, of in relation well, to your own experience? Well, there's, I think the responsibility, uh, the guru, you know, what, what was it in that movie, uh, Great Power Means Great Responsibility? Or something yes, like Spider-Man. Yeah, yeah Spider-Man, that's right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, that but, was a great line, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I think that... that uh, With great power comes great yes. yes. responsibility. Right, exactly. So, so Isn't the, it interesting we all noticed that line? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 I find absolutely. that very interesting. It was a good line. Because <laughs> when I mention it to other people, yeah. they don't resonate yeah. with it like <laughs> I do. Exactly. And like we do. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> but I think the, the spiritual law is that... Uh, if you're highly evolved, you always have the responsibility to get off everything. You can't pout, you can't sulk, you can't have a tantrum. <laughs> you're the, if an apology has to happen, you give it. 
<laughs> and so it always falls to you to get off it. <laughs> and so this sometimes becomes a tension with your, your person that wants to cry out and say, I want to stamp my feet, I want to have a <laughs> uh, tantrum, I don't want to do this. And then be, because you want to stay in that space, you have to do it. So I would say in that dimension there's that the tension. And we have no defense yeah. mechanism. Our job is to be completely open and, <laughs> and loving, you know, unconditionally loving of anyone who presents themselves in our life, you know, to grow with, to share with. We, you know, you can't walk into this job and say, I'm going to protect myself, you know, here's the contract, see my lawyer, you know. <laughs> when does that ever happen? You, the minute somebody comes into my class, they are in my life, and all their baggage, everything that they brought for 50,000 years is right in the middle of my lap. You have no defense. So when you accept this disciple there, you, you, don't, you don't say, oh, well, how is this going to turn out? Because if you decide in the front part how the relationship is going to turn out, then you have become the limitation of Absolutely. that disciple, and you can no Absolutely. longer be the guru. Right. The sec so, and the second thing is what you really want to do is awaken... A, an unimaginable possibility within that person. And so any thought of what it might be is, is wrong. Sure. So then when it turns out that the person either, for whatever reason, and there's no justifiable reason in my mind, you know, that the thing breaks, it's just the worst pain and the worst mm -hmm. disappointment that anybody could imagine. Mm -hmm. And I know it's a pain that all of us have experienced mm -hmm. together, and it's, it's horrible really horrible. <laughs> that was the one of the, the great personal sacrifices that I was talking about. Mm -hmm. yeah. Another aspect I'd like to look at here is the aspect of <clears throat> freedom. Hmm? If you in your masterful state are so totally free, you are so life affirmative and love based and just absolutely free and you want to share that freedom, mm -hmm. and yet <laughs> the only ones you could share it would be those who are with you, mm -hmm. the disciples, mm -hmm. and they can't rise to that level. Right. Uh, it's the right. same thing you're talking right. about in another way. They, they bring all their limitation and impose it upon you, and you're, you're like a kid, a little child. You just want to play. Right. And you can't do it because <laughs> there's nobody to play with. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's a yeah. sacrifice. It is. Well, it, it, <laughs> it, what it is is it just makes every single day, all of all day long, what we do is we work. Yeah. And the fact is, <laughs> even with the people who we love and we we want to share our joy with and have fun with, we can't yeah. because. You know, if we say the wrong thing, if we make the wrong gesture, if you know, if we allow, if we put ourselves in a position where we might be misunderstood, then you know, it turns into a you know a, a drama, a total mess, and so we end up just living in the same straitjacket that our <laughs> disciples have put us in, and we live in that straitjacket lovingly because we care about these people, you know. But the truth no, of the matter is, you know, you mm -hmm. open your heart, you let someone into your life. We never know when the knife is going to come out and we're the ones who are going to get our throats cut. <laughs> and it happens, you know, too often. Mm. And in America, you know, we everybody falls in love and out of love <laughs> on about a weekly basis. <laughs> you know, I love you, I love you means something, you know, it's something to do with business and exchange, I think. But people say, I love you all the time. Real love never ends. Real love is eternal. And the real love that a guru and a disciple share, the real love that gurus share among themselves, you know, is a love that is all-encompassing. It accepts every humanness. It accepts and embraces every human need, every human desire, every human activity without distinction, without judgment, you know, and it continuously is finding unity and wholeness. <laughs> Real love never dies, and the purpose of having a teacher in the first place is to, dis is to realize that all of our humanness, in all of its 
all, in every aspect of our humanness is really a manifestation of the divine. Yeah. Thank you. That was powerful.